turning to my clock. So welcome, Maven <laughs> and Vlad, for the Wayland Go 2021 update. Please go ahead. All right, everyone. So as, uh, as Adam said, uh, I'm Maven, and I'll be presenting with Vlad Zara Rodney uh, our progress on the Wayland Go. Uh, first, we'll have a simple agenda. I'll be introducing why is what a bit what is well on for people who aren't yet aware, uh, and then I like some key improvements that we have made since last since last academy, and then Vlad will talk about the next goals and objectives and improvements that we are planning. And uh, we'll have a uh, speculative uh, timeline in the conclusion at the end. Uh, first, what the, what the heck is Wayland a bit? Uh, Wayland is the future of desktop and Linux. Well, it's progressing at least that way. Uh, and it was necessary. It's, uh, it's uh, it's an improvement over X11. X11 has been the display graph, the display server for many years now, but it has, is really showing its age. It, it doesn't have uh, great support for IDDPI. It has really poor, uh, poor security model. And for all those reasons, X developers put together a new architecture to replace it, which, which is well on. And Wellon is not directly an implementation, but rather uh, an architecture uh, uh, to simplify its implementation of new compositors. And Queen is one of those. And and as such, uh, as such, uh, the whole plasma is moving towards uh, Wellon uh, because Queen is becoming uh, a full-fledged uh, Wellon compositor. Um, and, and in 2019, the Kadir community elected this goal to finalize the transition to Welland. And so I'm, and that's why we are here today. Uh, so I'll try, I'll highlight a few improvements that were made uh, since last academy. Uh, first, just a reminder is that uh, one of the main things that uh, when on the lows is to have mixed refresh rates. By, by that, it means that different outputs can have different refresh rates so that you can have a higher refresh rate on the side and a different one. Or, or, or if you have a game that's really heavy on the GPU, it can throttle it when it can lower the refresh rate on, on there compared to the second screen. And and really on X11, it wasn't possible in, by design. And uh, it has, and that's one of the features that went on uh, allows. And it's it's uh, worth highlighting now because we have a few features that relating to that, that, uh, uh, that build on top of that. Um, one one very user-facing uh, improvement that Alesh did was the screencasting and, and with some bells of Windows. Uh, output uh, screencasting was improved uh, drastically. It, it got a new implementation and a new, a new implementation and rendering so that uh, we can have a nice someday, thumbnails in Wayland just as we had in uh, X11, uh, and and along the way, it improved the screencasting functionality by and uh, allowing OBS, for instance, to properly uh, record windows and not just uh, and not just uh, the the whole output. Before previously, it was only possible to record the whole output. Then we have we had a very nice improvement from made by Vlad, which was the improvement to the sub surface implementation. It's it's a bit technical, but in in Wellon applications can divide themselves in sub surfaces, and previously we didn't have a very good implementation, but now it's, it's been sorted out, and 
and it's been very visible for applications that make use of subsurfaces like Firefox, uh, OBS, or Camel, and has been a great improvement for the application compatibility and and uh, and very pleasant to use. Like to to me, what's the main feature that allowed me to run most of the time on Wayland, just for for the Firefox browser maybe. Uh, we have a talk. We have we have currently an ongoing effort toward making uh, Queen Wayland more robust. Uh, that's so that we can have uh, the common Queen Queen Wayland re dash dash replace, as we had uh, for X11, sort of, and. Uh, David will talk a bit more on Sunday about it. Uh, I won't uh, go to much more detail, but it's quite important to have uh, more robust uh, sessions. And then we have activities. Uh, Kevin implemented the grounding work for proper activity support in Wayland. So activity allows Queen to handle windows and group windows by this intermediate grouping sort. And this grouping logic is now uh, implemented in Queen as well. It, it still meets, misses a few pieces, but most of it is here. Uh, it still misses a big, big, uh, few pieces compared to X11 support, basically. Um, and Alesh did great improvements on the XDG activation and startup feedback. So that's uh, a great work that uh, needed to be done upstream within XDG protocols specifications uh, so that applications can send uh, uh, can send uh, activation request so that an application can say when you click in the link in camel that you you can have firefox uh, focused afterwards firefox open the url and focused and in Wayland, we treat security uh, seriously so we need to have a chain of responsibility or to, to give explicit, an application must give explicitly the focus to another. So this protocol allows this to, to, to request that another application will be focused on behalf of, of another. Uh, and as I said, it, needed to, it needs to be cross applications to work. And uh, so it needed a, a cross, a standard, protocol and and all this also allows us to add the the very famous uh, bounty icon animation so that we can have the, the application icon bouncing uh, around the, the cursor while the application is starting up uh, it still needs uh, application uh, support to have proper proper support for it but, but it's, it's at, at hand. And then we have DRM backend improvements. So those, so great shout out to Xavier Hugle who did the, the, most of this work and sorry for, for his last name pronunciation. Uh, we had a great improvement on the uh, direct scan out. So direct scan out is great for gaming. It allows the, an application that's full screen to take control over the screen and, and Queen, the compositor, will just uh, fade away and just give all the uh, GPU and CPU resources to the application so that it can run, uh, so that it can render directly to the, the, um, the wind, the, the, to the screen without any interference from the compositor. Uh, we have adapted 
adaptive sync, aka VRR or var variable refresh rates. It's great also for gaming to avoid stuttering. So if you have a monitor that supports it, uh, we can have uh, this feature. Uh, and another uh, feature that was worked on by Xaver was uh, the multi-GPU multi and GPU uh, hot plugin support. It's about mainly uh, laptops with discrete GPUs in uh, uh, added, well, with laptops that have integrated uh, graphical units and then uh, discrete GPUs also. So it, it allows to move over buffer data from from uh, GPU to the other, and and thus uh, allow allow better uh, well better support for this this type of hardware. And there are a lot of other improvements as well. So we had uh, great screenshot optimization. So now screenshots are really fast and it doesn't need to copy as much data between the compositor and the in spectacle. Uh, we have a color integration. Uh, before we had a night color and color D. Color D is a demon to handle uh, blue light, uh, blue light, uh, blue light depending on the time of the day and we had night night uh, night color we did the same thing and the two would clash sometimes if you had the two installed on your system but now uh, we have a better integration and now they sort of complement themselves or at least they don't step on each other's toe and so we have much better color D integration than we learned. And last but not this is not queen specific. It's, it's not about queen, but quite important to to as well to for the stations. It's uh, SDDM will have a greeter implemented using Wayland. So it's great for speed up. Well, we can expect uh, SDDM to start a lot faster because X11 is it's slow to start. Whereas uh, a small compositor can be really more efficient, and uh, and with all those points said, I will let the leave the mic to Vlad to, so that he can uh, introduce you to the next goals and next uh, evolutions to Queen. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, so, um, okay, thanks, Megan. So, I want to talk about um, the next improvements that we want to make. So, where one becomes the default. So, so the first thing that we want to change is the scene. So, the scene is a key abstraction that's used to describe what goes into every frame. Um, currently, one of the biggest next goals is to make green green scene abstractions suitable for Wayland. But um, before we dive in, let's have a look at the current state. So the current uh, scene design dates back to the inception of compositing in green. So it's somewhere around 2006. So conceptually, the scene is just a list of windows sorted from, from, from bottom to top. So from my professional drawing, um, uh, you can see that we have seen, and it just contains some windows. So nothing, um, nothing more. It's that simple. So while the current scene design served us well on X11, so on X11, an X11 compositing manner just needs to take off screen buffers, compile them, compose them in a single buffer, and put it on the screen. On Wayland, it's a completely different situation. So the, the Wayland compositor has more responsibilities than uh, an Excel compositing manager. Um, it composites Windows, but it's also responsible for input handling, painting cursors, etc. And we constantly hit the limitations of the current scene graph. So to begin with, um, we want the scene graph sometimes include items such as cursor or, or the drag and drop um, um, or drag and drop icon, but since the scene graph is only 
can only contain Windows, uh, we cannot do that. Um, so we work around that by having role-specific paint, painting code paths. Um, it's a huge no if you're if you're Wayland developer, but we don't have any other choice right now. So so ideally, we must share code that paints Windows surfaces, cursor surfaces, and so on. But we cannot do that. Another flaw is that of the current scene design is that it's not possible to have the paint scheduled automatically. So, so say a window is moved, uh, window management code will have to schedule the paint manually. Um, as the past shows, it's too error prone and it's sometimes just too hard to get right. Um, another painful aspect of the current scene design is that uh, is that it doesn't really work well for cursors. So as I said previously, um, Twin has surface rollover painting code, and it sometimes and it sometimes doesn't work for drag and drop uh, icons. So um, so yeah. And another um, outcome of having rollover painting code is that Queen is able to paint cursors only with certain client buffer types. So, for example, Linux domain buff buffers are unsupported, which means that if a video game paints cursors using OpenGL or Vulkan, um, you won't see that cursor because Queen doesn't understand it, which again is a violation of protocols, and you and we need to fix it. It's a serious issue. So another painful thing about cursors is that they can have. Uh, extensions. So for the in some cases, such as creating a subsurface for the current surface are weird, but there are also um, valid use cases. So the most um, notable example that I can come up with is using VP viewport extension to to implement animated cursors. So so if you have, if an application wants to display an animated cursor, it could upload all cursor sprites in a big buffer and um, called sprite sheet and simply move the viewport inside the sprite sheet. So this way the application will have to do less work on every frame. And it seems like the presentation doesn't play the animation, but um, but you should see the red rectangle move on every frame. So in order to handle this case, the compositor needs to perform compositing. Uh, but again, we, we can handle this case properly. Mm. So the root cause of all our problems is that thing that is that scene things of uh, in terms of windows. So what if we break um, every window into smaller and reusable pieces? Um, that's the main idea of the single redesign. Um, the smaller building blocks of windows are called items. So on the picture on the left, you see that we have a shadow item, decoration item, and service item. And window item um, aggregates them into one, um, into one window um, item. So with a single graph design, we want to fix the issues with the existing single graph and make it more extensible for, for new features. Um, we, we, we also like it to be declarative, so meaning that Queen just needs to describe what it wants to be rendered, and the single graph design, uh, and the single graph renderer will figure out how um, how to do that and what parts of the screen needs to be repainted. Um, uh, since this scene uh, rough things in terms of items, it can now contain arbitrary um, things. It's not limited uh, to Windows only. So as you can see, the single rough can now contain Windows as well as some other special purpose um, items such as the cursor or drag and drop icons. So another goal is to is that um, 
So you can view a monitor as a device with a rectangular re region filled with a bunch of pixels, but the compiler views it as something more complex. So every monitor has a has a list of associated hardware planes, and plane just represents an image source that can be blended with or overlaid on top of other planes of the monitor. So the most important two plane types are primary and cursor. So the cursor plane represents just a regular mouse cursor, and the primary plane is usually used to present other graphics contents, content such as Windows or normal Windows, desktop background, etc. Um, the key thing here is that planes are blended by hardware. Um, it allows the compiler to avoid performing compositing if the cursor moves. The compositor will just update the position of the cursor plane and the hardware will blend it with the other planes. No compositing will be performed, which is which is really, really good because um, we do less work and it's better for power consumption and, and it's more efficient. Um, so in order to benefit from hardware planes, we also would like to have a single graph per every hardware plane. Um, um, since we want the single graph to be declarative, um, the effects also need to change. Uh, we need uh, a declarative effects API. Um, it's worth no noting that the animation effect a class already provides such an API, so we need to see if we can extend it and port the remaining effects to it. Um, the JavaScript effects will probably not require any changes. Uh, more complex effects, such as desktop read or present windows, uh, need to be really implemented using uh, QML. Um, the, the last two effects are a bit special because the previous QMate tenor already discovered issues with present Windows and desktop window, desktop effect, and, and there is a task to re-implement them using QML, um, which dates back to 2012. So it's a bit old task. So, the next question is when it's going to be um, finished. So some of the graph design changes already merged or merged in or landed in 5.22. So you should see the less visual artifacts in applica applications such as Firefox or other applications that use subsurfaces. Um, there's still a lot of work ahead of us, but uh, so it's going to take a while before we, we are done with, with this task. Um, on a related note, I would like to, to discuss a bus to talk about briefly about Qt Quick and Queen. So Qt Quick is simply an amazing piece of technology and we use it extensively in Plasma. Um, so after trying it, you don't really want to go back to Qt widgets. So it will be nice to see Queen as a Qt Quick Wayland compositor. Um, we would share the, the same technology stack across Plasma, which will open Queen for more Plasma developers. So it may not happen now, but I have no doubt that it's going to happen at some point in the future. So we will Queen will become a Qt Quick compositor. Currently, we have a few integration issues that are kind of big blockers for the switch. Um, besides that, we, um, there are performance concerns, um, specifically Qt with uh, Qt Quick with a default render doesn't track damage, so it tries to repaint the entire window on every frame. Um, so it, it means that if you use the blur effect and watch a video the background behind the panel will be blurred on every frame, which, which, is, which is a kind of serious performance issue. So Qt Quick 2D looks very compelling as it does track damage. 
but it supports only software rendering and we need something like and we need we need something like QT Quick 3D but which also works with OpenGL or RHI. Um, so I don't expect the current situation to change in the nearest future, but if there are KD community members that are familiar with QT declarative code and want us help with this, um, please contact us in, in the Queen IRC channel and we will discuss more in detail what needs to be done to, to make to make uh, Queen a QT quick compositor. So that's that's about single. So the next kind of tricky topic is is the timeline. So Wayland has been in the Wayland session has been in development stage for quite a while, and it raises a natural question: when when is it going to be finally ready? So here's my optimistic timeline. So in Plasma five times, we're definitely going to stick with X11. Uh, in Plasma six, though, I hope that Plasma session will mature enough so we can safely start recommending Linux distribution distros to make the Wayland session the default one. Um, it's worth noting that Fedora is ahead of the curve in this area. Um, they made the Wayland session default in Fedora um, 34, and and they provided us invaluable feedback. So it's really cool to see more first adopters of Wayland like Fedora. Um, in Plasma 7 or somewhere late in Plasma 6, I hope that the Excellent session will be dropped in favor of Wayland. As I said, it's it's a very optimistic timeline, but but I hope that it is gonna be true. So um, in the conclusion, so the Plasma Wayland session is proving is improving on a steady pace. Um, with every release, we try to resolve as many as possible blockers. Um, for basic usages, uh, such as simply browsing or watching movies, I think that Wayland session is already really good. Uh, you may experience some issues, minor issues in with web browsers, but for me, uh, Firefox with native Wayland support uh, has been working really, really good. For other usages, uh, it may need some more work. Um, and in general, uh, the transition to to Wayland, to Wayland is an, requires an, an enormous effort, and it needs the community help. So um, there are multiple ways that you can help us. Um, that you can help us um, with this. So, for example, test beta releases file bug reports, or submit code changes. Uh, for more details, please visit the Wayland wiki page. Um, I think that's that's all from my side, or from our side. So, questions? OK, thanks, uh, Vlad. Thanks, Maven. Maven, I guess you want to rejoin um, in case there are questions. And um, so far, we don't have questions so people you know at this point you should know how to ask questions um the there is a widget in the um matrix uh, application you need to use the webchat.kde.org but uh, apart from that if you go in the uh, panel in the information of the room you will see two widgets and there are, right now for technical reason they are both called custom one is the video stream and the other one is the questions but the link to the question has been shared also in the in the chat room. And we have a one question. So uh, from David, uh, uh, how much code for things like input can be done in cooperation with other compositors? What technical problems create fragmentation? Um, I don't quite follow uh, the question. So, um, so we share some code with other Wayland compositors. So we have 
a library called libinput. So it takes care of the most of um, of the nastiest input related stuff. So we need to implement some Wayland specific stuff, but I don't think that we can share that much code there. Okay. Um, no other question for now. You mentioned at least one buff during the presentation, if I remember correctly. Do you want to advertise yeah, it more? Yes. Yeah. So I I still need to to find a slot for. Basically, we want to have a buff about effects. So basically, what we need to change about them in order to to make them work with a scenery design. Um, please check the above pages. So I'll try to to find a slot that works for for us. Okay. There are really no other questions. So I guess, but you will rejoin again in a few minutes uh, for the uh, community goal, if I remember correctly. Uh, so there will be some time for other other questions. Okay. So thank you again uh, for this a lot of work going on um much appreciated so we have a few minutes we will uh, start again at the uh, now i have to not confuse it the the um, uh, uh the time zones so at in well nine minutes let's say uh the next oh we have another um question that just came out so maybe we can just continue with that so this is a repeat question from last year. What is the status of color management in Plasma Wayland? So we landed some initial support for, for uploading gamma ramps. But basically, if you talk about things such as HDR, so no, we, we want to implement it, but nobody has put any effort into it. There is upstream work, and I know that Wayland Western um has some improvements but yeah so we plan to to to, to fix it um people probably have found the links for the questions because they are now <laughs> coming in so recently zing os added some good gestures in kwin uh should we look into these um what did they add so i didn't hear good gest gestures Oh, most yeah. The question doesn't say. Uh, just say good gesture. So I'm not sure if it's good about. Gestures, you know. gestures. Oh. Well, I don't know them, so maybe they're interesting. Maybe it's just something that uh, others can you know, duplicate the configuration on their own distro. Maybe I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nicolo is saying something, but I guess you can probably get that in the next uh, uh, in the next session. There is another question which is gaining a lot of support. You mentioned this uh, from David, another David, David Redondo. You mentioned the scene redesign and the KWIN work as the next big thing to do. What are the other big things need to happen? Um, or is it just small bits there and there? So, so right now, we, for the scene redesign, it's mostly in Queen. Um, so, off top of my off top of my head, I can't really answer this question. So I need to think about it, but. I see, I see a few subjects like uh, input methods, uh, currently uh, an area where we need to still find a, a consensus with the wider community. Uh, well, sort of, we could have a better implementation on our own, but then it would need, and it's, so input methods, you know, for CH, C, CGK uh, languages in particular, mm. and uh, for more context. And here we don't have uh, 
very good experience currently, and it will need some uh, standardization ideally. So, so that's an area, for instance. Uh, we have uh, uh, a smaller thing is uh, output uh, output management. Uh, I'm looking into it right now, and uh, and uh, big other things on top of my head. Don't come. Uh, drag and drop issues and X well on compatibility in general. So those are more like smaller things, but they are really spread out and there are different angles uh, around those. Let's start. Uh, and there is time for another question. Uh, what is the state of copy from John? Johan? What is the state of copy paste between X clients and Wayland clients, especially uh, with respect uh, to the clip clipboard history? Uh, Regard to. Don't use. Well, I don't know the state here. Uh, should be working, but I think we have some issues there. Well, uh, copy pasting, particularly. But regarding the history specifically, uh, I don't. I don't have not I have no knowledge. Fortunately, maybe Vlad, you have. So as far as I know, um, um, David was looking into this so so he probably knows better what about but yeah clip, clipboard stuff is a bit painful thing on on wayland session there is some there are some suggestions from the chat like uh that it's saying we know we have some issues in some conditions more help narrowing this down would be appreciated uh and yeah and there is another comment saying, I think the state is it should work, but it doesn't, if it doesn't file a bug. So, okay, community for the app. Okay, I think we have just to let's leave two minutes. There are no other questions, I think. Let me recheck. No, no other, no other questions. So, um, so thanks again. Um, the, the, as people were suggesting, the answer is always come to the buff and discuss that. So, there will be more than time for, for that. So we are going to take two minutes of break, probably before the next talk. Um, thanks again.